that I had a great teacher in high school. She sparked my curiosity in writing. And the reason why I felt it was important at the time was not for the writing's sake, or not for storytelling purposes, but there are things in story, inherently in story, that can help me be a better basketball player, be a better teammate, a better leader, understand emotions better. So it's just insanely curious, man. And, you know, trivial things weren't going to pull my attention. It had to be things, weren't going to pull my attention. It had to be things that were, I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. At, at what age did that goal become crystal clear? That I, made, I made that deal with myself at 13 years old. At 13 years 13 old? 13 years old. That's the deal I made. You clear about it. Crystal clear. And where did inspiration come from? The love of the game. The love of the game. The challenge. Like, I, I would watch Magic play. I'd watch Michael play. And I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. Let's find out. And so that curiosity to see where I could push this thing led me down that path. Uh, competitive with things that I, I participate in. Basketball for me was the most important thing. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything, everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft right. because you know what you're looking for. So at 13 years old, I had a um, <laughs> kill list. And so, you know, they used to do these rankings. It was Street and Smith basketball rankings. And I was nowhere to be found because I was like 6'4", scrawny, like 160 pounds soaking wet. So I was like 57 on the list. And so I will look at 56, 55, all the way up to number one, who these players are, what club teams they played for. So when we go on an AAU travel circuit, I, I got to hunt them down, right? And so that became my mission in high school, is to check off every other person, all those 56 other names, hunt them down and knock them down. So like in, at 13 years old, you know, I played the longer game because my game wasn't about being better than you at 13. It was to be better than you when, you know, the chips are really on, on the line. So when you played at 13, I would size you up and see what your strengths and weaknesses are. How do you approach the game? Are you silly about it? Are you goofy about it? Are you good at it just because you're bigger and stronger than everybody else? Right? Or is there actually thought and skill that you put into it? Right? And when I'd play, I'd play to my weaknesses. I wouldn't play to my strengths. I played to my weaknesses. Because when you're playing summer basketball, there's so many games. So there's not a lot of skill work being done. So when are you going to get better? Right? When you're playing in competition situations, you're only playing to your strengths. Why? Because you want to win. So what I would do, I was work on the things during those games that I was weak at. Left hand, pull up jump shot, uh, post game. Right? So I have a strategy. And so then fast forward to when I'm 17, and my game is completely well-rounded, and that player at 13 that I saw at 13 is still doing the same shit at 17, mm. now you got a problem. That's right. Yeah. What I found in the NBA is a lot of guys played for financial stability. And when they came to the NBA, they got that financial stability. So therefore, the passion and the work ethic and the, obsession, the obsessiveness was gone. So I'm looking at that, I'm like, Oh my God, it's going to be like taking candy from a baby. Now, I wonder Mike wins all these fucking championships. And then you had the players that had that passion, but weren't willing to commit their entire lives to doing that, right? It's a choice, right? You have other things. You have family. You have all these other things that you have to do. The game can't really be your number one priority. And so I was just looking at that like, man, I'm... This is going to be fun. Like, I see a lot of players take vacations with other players that are close friends. And they'll oh, just take vacations just to take vacations or just hang out just to hang out. Like, I, I, I'm not, I never did that. Because when I retire, I didn't want to have to say, I wish I would have done more. I don't want that. You know, I don't want that. I went to Goat Mountain and I talked to Michael Bird. Hakeem Olajuwon, Jerry West, Oscar Robinson, Bill Russell, you know. So I would talk to them. What did you do? What were your experiences? Michael in particular, he's become my big brother. 
who's been my big brother since I first came in the league. And what was that process like? So I went to them and started understanding the ins and outs of the game and you know how they approach things and their level of detail and obsessiveness and that's what I did. Well, you know, it's you got to look at the reality of the situation. You know, like for me, it's not you know you, you kind of got to get over yourself. Like it's not about you, man. Like oh, okay, you feel embarrassed. You're not that important. Like <laughs> get over yourself. Yep. Like you're worried about how people may perceive you and like you're walking around and it's embarrassing because you shot five air balls. Get over yourself. Right? And then after that, it's okay, well, why did those air balls happen? Got it. High school, year before, we played 35 games, max, right? Week in between, spaced out, plenty of time to rest. In the NBA, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I didn't have the legs. So you look at the shot, every shot was online. Every shot was online, but every shot was short. Right? I got to get stronger. Uh, I got to train differently. The weight training program that I'm doing, I got to tailor it for an 82-game season mm. so that when the playoff come around, my legs are stronger and that ball gets there. So I look at it with rationale and say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I go, well, next year they'll be there. That was it. Done. For example, jumping ability. Man, my vertical was a 40. It wasn't a 46 or a mm -hmm. 40, 45. My hands are big, but they're not massive. Right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast. Right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it, though. the game mm. and it just never changed you'd be the greatest of all time i don't i don't deal with people that don't commit at that level but then act as if they do i don't deal with that the game itself was it, it's a it's a complicated answer so there there are very tactical things in terms of footwork and geometry of the court so you're looking at the court and looking at the 45 degree angles that the court is is shaped in and how it needs to operate that's one component to it. So looking at spots on the floor where you can increase your efficiency, right? You can be on the wing, but there's a certain spot on the wing that improves your angle to drive to the basket, right? So that sort of stuff. Footwork of the opposition, looking at the emotion of the opposition, their tendencies, their weaknesses, and all that stuff. Understanding the momentum of the game, how to create momentum shifts, where momentum shifts come from, all this sort of stuff. Um, and then studying outside of that, right? Looking at different industries, looking at uh, conductors, looking at writers, looking at actors and how they get into character and then how do they keep themselves in that mental space. So um, looking at different, different industries, looking at nature itself mm. and learning from that and how you can incorporate that into the game. It, I, I, man, it's, it's a lot of studying. Depends on the decision. Depends on the decision. If we're talking about, you know, a basketball decision where, you know, you've got to read a certain coverage or something like that. I mean, a lot of that comes from the, the pre-work, pre-work and understanding what their defensive package is and uh, how to put teammates in certain situations. So, for example, if you look at players nowadays that are charged with taking game-winning shots, or making game-winning decisions, mm -hmm. and you look at the play and then you look at it and you say, okay, well, that shooter was there, the double team came, and, you know, the player couldn't do anything but pass the ball, right? Well, that's because they didn't do the pre-work, right? So when you do the pre-work, you understand, okay, this team in a situation likes to run a double team from this particular angle. All right, so I'm going to clear that side out, force the double team to come from a different angle, move myself to a space on the floor where it's going to take a long time for the double team to come, and now I can circumvent the double team and get to a place on the floor where I can knock down a shot and get to the basket. So it's, it's all that pre-work, 